page 380. Page 380, Jesus saves. Page 380, standing as we say. savings time. I'm, I'm in favor of Congress doing something very great and yeah. keeping us on daylight savings time. Yeah. I told, said to some, a few others uh, today, they can do something other than spend our great grandchildren's money. Let's, you know, yeah. give us an extra hour of daylight at the end of the day and keep it that way. So, that's my opinion. And as I challenged my Sunday school class this morning, if it's not yours, let's not get mad at each other over that. <laughs> Everybody's looking for a reason to put them up, right? Let's yeah. not be that way. I'm sure thankful that we can gather together as God's children today. Let's pray. Lord, you're good to us, and we're grateful. Thank you most of all for your sacrifice for us at Calvary. Not only, Lord, did you lay down your life, but you desire that we would come to you for salvation. Thank you that you saved us. I pray, Lord, that if there be any with us this morning, either in person or online, who don't know you, their personal Lord and Savior, that they would trust you this morning. Lord, minister to the needs of each of our hearts and lives. Minister to the needs of souls today. Lord, we pray your healing hand upon those in our congregation who are uh, dealing with health needs. I pray you'd give them strength and healing to their body, these battling cancer and other needs. And uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Sister Kathy and her recovery from uh, this auto accident. I pray you watch over her. Thank you, Lord, that it wasn't super serious, but we pray you will give the doctors wisdom and theirs and minister to her needs. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. All right, page 18, page 18, all hail the power. Page 18. Page 18. Page 18. Page 18. Page 18. Page 18. Page 18.
the announcements uh, today will be our first choir practice in 13 months, I think. So this afternoon at 5.15, uh, meet here in the auditorium. We'll be down here on the, uh, the auditorium floor at uh, 5.15 on the piano side and practice till about 5.45. Uh, you can distance, you can wear a mask, that won't be a problem. Uh, if, you're, if you have not been in the choir prior to now, hey, you can jump in because we're starting all over. So uh, look forward to our choir getting back to uh, practicing. And they, uh, the plan is that uh, first, uh, first time we'll have them in, this, in church will be uh, Easter Sunday morning. And then uh, choir, so you know, our, our, our desire is that you will sing in the morning services there for the month of April. And we'll make adjustments as as we go along, but I'm excited about getting our choir uh, back uh, back at it. So that'll that'll be a blessing to uh, our services and a great opportunity for you to to serve. You know, one of the dangers of uh, this COVID time is we've become so self-absorbed and all in our own kind of bubble that uh, we're losing. We've lost some of our uh, outreach and outlook, uh, how to serve and be a blessing to others. So challenge you to uh, if you're interested to be here for for that uh, choir members. And then uh, also remind our online crowd that we are uh, encouraging you to return to church Easter week, either Palm Sunday or, or Easter Sunday that week, be a special week for us. Uh, and many have already uh, answered that. And we have another, another uh, family represented this morning in our service today. So I think that makes about four or five that have uh, rejoined us in person. So in the last uh, few weeks. So we're excited about that. Amen and uh, encouraging to see our, our COVID numbers in the state continuing to, to drop. And I think I heard this week, we, if we'd have been one lower, that our county would have gone down a level of uh, risk level or whatever the, the, uh, the state is calling that. So uh, things are continuing to improve. And thankfully, uh, church-wise, uh, we're doing, uh, doing very well in that area. It's been a long while since we've had a positive case among our church family. So thankful for that. God's been, God's been very good to us. So uh, choir practice today, uh, 5.15 to 5.45 uh, this afternoon. And then ladies, uh, Bible study will be tomorrow at 3.15, back in the fellowship hall from 3.15 to 4 o'clock. That'll be uh, study three uh, in the book of Philippians. That's uh, study three of a four-part series my wife is leading. So ladies, you have an opportunity to be here for that tomorrow afternoon at 3.15. And then this Saturday, we have a teen activity. The teens will be going hiking and they need to be dropped off at the church at 8.55 a.m. And then please pick them up at noon. They'll need to bring water and uh, tire appropriate shoes for uh, their hike. And you say, man, that's awful early for a youth activity. My understanding is we're accommodating several of our young people that are keeping the economy moving by working jobs. So uh, they're gonna hike early and enjoy the uh, morning time out there on, on their hike. So we hope to have a good group of young people out for that. All right, my dad will come and receive our offering. All right, good morning. good morning. What a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I, I came in this morning, the pastor was in his office, and, I, and he said uh, something like, time change Sunday. And I said, yes, and uh, your congregation will be largely absent, and mine will be asleep. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, you showed up, praise the Lord. Yeah. And uh, so if you stay awake tonight, that's two. Uh, Good to see everyone. Let's have our ushers come and we'll honor the Lord with our tithes and offerings. If you're here for the first time, good to have you here. If you're coming back, glad, you came. glad you're back. And uh, praise the Lord. I don't know if you noticed, but I got orange in my tie. Pastor Brent's got orange in his tie. And the pastor's got orange in his tie. And that's almost orange peach. <laughs> so I don't know if we're all moving for Tennessee or... Uh, 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 pardon? Can't can't do that. My daughter's from Tennessee. She can be here tonight, so we're whatever. Uh, all right. Uh, Parker, we thank the Lord for the offering, please. So, Lord, I thank you that we're able to meet this morning. I pray that you will bless our services and that you'll speak to all of our hearts and show us what you want us to hear from your word. And I pray that you'll bless this offering and in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thanks for that special Debbie. Let's turn to John chapter 3 in our Bibles this morning as we continue our series in the life of Christ in the Gospels of John chapter 3, Gospel of John chapter 3. We're going to look today at the event of Nicodemus meeting Jesus. Nicodemus meets Jesus. If you're able and willing, if you'll stand out of respect for God's word, it's good to have everyone here today. We're always honored to have guests with us. Thank you for joining us today. Hope the service will be a blessing to everyone, both online as well as those in person. John chapter 3, and let's begin. Uh, you follow along as I read. We'll just read verses 1 through 3 for introduction this morning. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Father, help us, I pray, as we look at this passage of Scripture today. Help us to see truth that would minister to the, the mind, the heart, the soul, Lord, of every individual that will hear today. Lord, as always, and specifically now, I ask that there be anyone under the sound of my voice that they would, that don't know you as their Savior, that they would come to you in faith today and trust you. To those of us who are your own, Lord, I pray you'd give us confidence and assurance in our relationship with thee help us lord to refocus our effort in proclaiming the good news the gospel of the lord jesus christ i pray and ask these things in jesus name and for his sake amen thank you for standing you may be seated nicodemus meets jesus Nicodemus had questions. Perhaps you have the same questions Nicodemus had or, or similar questions in your soul. Nicodemus had, had some questions within. I want us to, to note this, that Nicodemus went to the right person to get the answer. Now, a lot of people have questions, but unfortunately they go to the wrong people for to, to get the answer to uh, their question. One of the things I've become increasing, increasingly aware of in recent weeks is, is this danger that we have going on, and it really is dangerous in our society of the echo chamber way that we're living. Uh, we, we surround ourselves with people who agree with us, so we, we, it, it gives us strength in thinking that we're right. Listen, any opinion you have needs to be filtered through the eternal, everlasting Word of God. And if your opinion goes against God's Word, listen, if 5 billion people on this planet are in agreement with you, but you're against God, you're wrong as well as the 5 billion right, people. Amen. We need to be careful that we aren't just bringing people into our lives who are going to pat us on the back for our opinion, and when we haven't verified our opinion in the truth of God's Word. Or worse yet, we're trying to defy God. Nicodemus had questions within, but he went to the right person to get his answers. I want to ask you this question this morning, among many that I'll ask. But first of all, have, have you gone to the right person for the answer for your question? Have you gone to the right person to the, to the, for the answer for your soul? During the heyday of Benjamin Franklin, uh, when he was gaining world honors for his discoveries surrounding electricity, and aren't we all thankful for electricity, uh, he re received a lot of mail. Uh, of course, in that time, they didn't have text and social media and all these other modes of communication yet. Uh, but he received a lot of, of mail. One letter may have been the most important of all the letters he received at this time in his life. It was a letter that was written concerning his soul. None other than the famous preacher, George Whitfield, 
had written a letter to Mr. Benjamin Franklin. And he said this, quote, I find that you grow more and more famous in the learned world as you have made such progress in the, inve in the investiga investigating the mysteries of electricity. I now humbly urge you to give diligent heed to the mystery of the new birth. It is a most important and interesting study, and when mastered, will richly repay you for your pains. Yeah. End quote. I mean, Benjamin Franklin was gaining world fame and, and uh, honors for his breakthroughs in the area of electricity. And at that time, the man of God, if probably the then uh, the one who was looked to by, by most, if not all, believers as a great man of God of that time, uh, took the time to write a letter to this famous successful man and urge him to seek answers to the question of his soul. Whitfield understood that fame and fortune cannot satisfy the needs of one's soul. That's right. You see, Nicodemus had it all, yet he was searching. Nicodemus went to the one who could, the one and only person who could satisfy his need. And friend, I want you to understand something. It's only Jesus that can answer and satisfy the need of your soul. Amen. It's not found in anything else. So I want us to note, first of all, this morning, the searcher. In this story, the searcher's name is Nicodemus. But in the story of your life, it's you. In the story of my life, it was me. He's the searcher. Jeremiah verse, chapter 29 and verse 13, the Bible says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Nicodemus was searching for some answers to the needs of his soul, of his heart. Nicodemus was a very religious man. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He was a very religious man, a ruler of the Jews. He had a, a high, lofty position uh, in the religion of his time, the religion of his people. He was a member of the Sanhedrin Council, which was the ruling council. He was a renowned Pharisee. He would have been uh, well read and well acquainted with Bible, uh, with the scriptures, or with the Old Testament scriptures and understanding. He did, achieved tremendous status in his knowledge of the, of the Old Testament uh, scriptures. History also tells us that Nicodemus was a very rich man. He was not only a very religious man, understanding the, the Old Testament scriptures and those ways in a Pharisee, he would have been looked upon with great honor. He would have carried himself uh, thusly, but he was also a very rich man. History tells us he was among the three wealthiest men in Jerusalem of that time. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, they didn't have a whole lot back then. Well, no matter what time era you're living, if you're among the three wealthiest, you've accomplished something. Right. To relate it to us today, think about the top three wealthiest people, according to Forbes. Jeff Bezos is the head of, or the controlling party of Amazon. He's worth $179 billion. That's something, isn't it? Bill Gates, leading Microsoft, $111 billion. Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, $85 billion. I don't know about you, but I'd take any one of those uh, bank accounts. It'd be fine with me. <laughs> Nicodemus was a very wealthy man. Now, I don't know that he was worth billions, but if he was one among the top three wealthiest people in Jerusalem at that time, he was worth a few bucks. I don't think he was wondering where next year's meals were going to come from. He was set. He was set. He had achieved a position uh, in life. Uh, but no matter your status, uh, if you're uh, super wealthy, uh, super knowledgeable, you've got a great position in your career, no matter your status, the answer for your soul is only found in Christ. No matter your status in life, the need of your soul is the same. Rich or poor, healthy or ill, morally upright or an immoral wretch, the answer to your soul's need is only found in Christ. Amen. 
we're going to study, as we study the life of Christ, how that the Lord Jesus Christ interacted with people of all status. He was interested in winning the souls of the very rich and religious as well as the very poor and wretched and all statuses in between. We see here that Nicodemus, although on the pinnacle of his career and he had retained much knowledge and acquired great wealth, he was a needy man. He was a needy man. And he sought the Lord. You know, every soul needs Christ. Yeah. No matter no matter your status in life, you need Christ. You need Christ. It might be easy for us to see, well, the down and outer, they need Jesus. My friend, the up and the ups need Christ as well. Nicodemus needed the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see the searcher. Have you searched for the answer to the void in your within, that void in your soul? The answer is the Savior. The answer is the Savior. And the Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice with me in verses 4 through 10. John chapter 3 and verse 4. Nicodemus saith unto him. Well, let's reread verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto, the, unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? The Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to see, first of all, under this point about the Savior answering the need of the searcher, first of all, he knows your heart. The Savior knows your heart. The Lord Jesus Christ knows what's going on in your heart and within. He, he knew and he, he knows what is in man. Verse 25 of the previous chapter says, And needeth, speaking of Jesus, And needeth not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Jesus knows what's in your heart. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The answer is Jesus can know it. The answer is, more specifically, Jesus does know your heart. That's right. Jesus knows the need of your heart. He knew Nicodemus' need. Did you notice as we were reading that he didn't answer directly Nicodemus' question? Notice with me again, verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said, what? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. Where'd that come from? Well, how did Jesus know that that's what Nicodemus needed to hear? Because Jesus knew Nicodemus' heart. That's right. Jesus knows your heart. He knows the need of your soul. He knows, he knows your need. Jesus' communication with Nicodemus, his statements to him, the questions that he asked, the illustrations he used, Served to reveal the concerns of Nicodemus' heart. Nicodemus had a void within. He, he knew there was something different about Jesus. We, we know that, that thou art a, a, a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus' response was, You must be born again. Yeah. I don't think that Nicodemus was being disrespectful in any way in his response. I think Nicodemus was searching. In verse 4, he said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, verse 5, a second man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus used illustrations and statements to reveal the concerns of Nicodemus' heart. And listen, friend, this ever-living word of God will do the same for you. 
As you hear the word of God, it will reveal the needs of your heart and it will relate the truth of God's word by the spirit of God to the needs of your soul. God's word is alive. It works. And Jesus Christ was speaking to Nicodemus the, the word of God to penetrate his heart and his soul and let him know, look, Nicodemus, you must be born again. He achieved tremendous status. It is not a stretch to say this. Nicodemus knew more about the Old Testament than probably anyone in this room or anyone listening. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say he probably had more of the Old Testament memorized than any of us have any of the Bible memorized. He had achieved tremendous status. He thought he knew, but he never trusted Christ. The answer to the needs of Nicodemus' soul was you must be born again. You must be born again. What does this mean? Nicodemus is searching. What does this mean? Jesus develops the truth a little more. The wind bloweth, verse 8, where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. What was he saying? The wind is not seen, but it's evident. Wind is not seen, but there is evidence of the wind being there. The Spirit of God may not be seen, but there is evidence in your heart, in your life, in your soul. That's right. When He is there. That's right. He's not seen, but He's He's evident. He's there. We cannot see the Holy Spirit, but we can see the change He makes. Amen. The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we're His child. If Amen. we are, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know him as your personal Lord and Savior? Does the Spirit of God bring peace to your soul? We may not be able to see the Spirit of God, but we can see the change Amen. that he makes. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man, that's speaking of a soul, if any man, woman, boy, or girl, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The Spirit of God comes into your life and He transforms your life. He changes right. you. There's something different about, about your life. It doesn't mean that we don't sin anymore. I like how one preacher said it. It's, it's not that when we trust Christ and the Spirit of God comes and dwells within us that we become sinless. But as the Spirit of God comes and dwells within us and we cooperate with the Spirit of God and apply the Word of God to our life, we are sinning less. The Spirit of God will change your life. Amen. He'll change your life. Do you have the witness of the Spirit of God within you? He knows your name. Nicodemus came asking questions. Christ asked Nicodemus questions to reveal his heart and relate the Word of God to his soul, to his life. He knows your name. He knows your need. Aren't you thankful that Jesus knows your name? Aren't you thankful that he knows your need? He does. We see the searcher. We see the Savior. And lastly, this morning, I want us to consider the salvation. The searcher. His name was Nicodemus. The searcher, his or her name, should be yours. Right. We see the Savior. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no other way of redemption other than the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But then we see the salvation. Listen, friend, don't miss this. The salvation is a personal, it's an individual decision. Yeah. Nicodemus was brought up the right way. Nicodemus was brought up in, in the religious circles. He had attained great knowledge and achievement. But Nicodemus, he had to make a choice. He had to choose whether he was going to receive or reject the Savior. Right. That choice was up to Nicodemus and Nicodemus alone. Jesus couldn't make that choice for him. It was up to Nicodemus to make that choice. Salvation is a personal decision. Jesus provides salvation. How? Through the new birth. Again, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Down there in verse 5, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. There's some argument, I'll call it good argument, good debate, over what that water birth is referring to in verse 5. Obviously, we know the Spirit is referring to God the Holy Spirit. But what of this water? What is that a reference to? What is that water referring to? Many believe that the water reference here is a reference to our physical birth, our natural birth. And, I, and that is fine with me. I, I, I wouldn't argue with anyone about that. I think that, would, that certainly would make sense. There's a lot of water. If there's no water in the room, there's problems, right? Uh, our family's uh, very much aware of that from uh, a stillbirth that we had uh, uh, many years ago. Uh, that water is important. That, that water birth, that seems to be substantiated by verse 6. That which is born in the flesh is flesh, and that which is born in the spirit is spirit. Water is necessary for uh, physical uh, birth, and it certainly would seem to substantiate that someone has to be born physically and spiritually. But what about this? What of this? You know, many times in the Bible, the Word of God is referred to as water. As water. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, of the Word of God applied by the Spirit of God. I have no argument with that application of this passage either. You say, well, preacher, uh, shouldn't, we, should, uh, shouldn't we have a definitive here? Shouldn't we be dogmatic about this? You can if you want. That's fine. Yeah, I won't argue with you. But both points are true. That's right. If you're going to get to heaven, you're going to have to be born twice. That's right. All of us have been born once. Right. If you're going to get to heaven, you must be born again. Born of the Spirit. Amen. Born of the Spirit. How are we born again of the Spirit? It is by the Spirit of God applying the everlasting Word of God to our heart, our soul, our mind. We take God in His Word, and the Spirit of God comes and saves our soul. He redeems us from our sinful, uh, just reward of hell and punishment away from God for all eternity by applying the Word of God to our soul. Amen. Water and Spirit. Bible is referred to as a cleansing agent. Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Ephesians 5, 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. The word of God. Jesus provides salvation. He provides that new birth. You may be sitting here this morning or listening online and think, how can I be born again? How can it be? How can I experience the new birth? Friend, if that's your question this morning, you're in a great, great spot. And you're about to hear the right answer. The answer that Jesus gave. Notice what it says in verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him. Oh, say him. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And listen, would you listen to verse 16? I know you've got most of it memorized and not all of it, but listen to it for God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Friend, who's the son? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. One person pointed out as I was in my preparation, you know the middle word in John 3, 16 in our King James Bible? Son. It's Jesus. Salvation is centered in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only through him. Yeah. No other name. It's only in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's only in Christ. Jesus is pleading for your soul. He's, he went to Calvary. He bled and died for your sin. Would you trust him? Have you trusted him? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus pleads for your soul. He wants to save you. Notice what it says in verse 17. For God sent not his son, again, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, into the world to condemn the world, but 
that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus provides salvation. He provides a new birth. You apply the Spirit of God will apply the Word of God to your soul if you will, by faith, receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. In order to receive Christ, you've got to turn away from the others. It's not adding Christ to all your other ways. It's Christ and Christ alone. Jesus is pleading for you to be saved. Would you trust him today? Would you trust him? In Revelation chapter 3, the Bible records this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Jesus is pleading for souls to come to him for salvation. Listen, the need of our world is Jesus. Amen. The need of our world is the Lord Jesus Christ. The lost need to turn to Christ in repentance and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we who claim to know Christ need to return to the Lord and renew our right relationship with Him and fellowship with Him. I'm thankful for the advances of science. I'm grateful we've got this vaccine going on. I'm hopeful we're going to be have this COVID thing behind us soon. But listen, friend, the answer to, a, to, a, to the needs of the world is not more money. It's not more scientific advancement. It's not a different name uh, occupying a political office. The answer to our world is Christ. Amen. It's the word of God. We who are God's people need to get back to trusting this book again. We need to live by faith. Trust the word of God. Nicodemus was a man who was searching for answers. He had a void within, a void in his soul. He could not fill or satisfy that void. He had achieved great status. He had great wealth. But there was a need within. He came to Jesus by night. There was, there was something about him. He knew he had to find the answers. Jesus, the one and only true Savior, knew his heart's need. And he was the answer to his need. Friend, he's the answer to your need. We'll see in some weeks. Jesus ministered to a, a wicked woman at the well. Jesus was the answer to her need, as well as this uppity-up rich man's need. Jesus is the answer to your need. You know, we've read this passage today. Most of us are familiar with the story of Nicodemus. We've heard the conversation that he and Jesus had. Did Nicodemus get saved? Do you see here in the story where he trusted Christ? Is that in there? Do you read that there in John chapter 3? Do we have record of his conversion? Did, did Nicodemus trust Christ? Turn back to John chapter 19, if you would. John chapter 19. And we're going to pick it up in verse 38. Now, to bring you up to speed to where we are, the, the earthly ministry of Christ is past. He's been crucified. He's hanging on the cross. And we pick up the story here in verse 38. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. There came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. They Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Let me ask you a question. Did Nicodemus get saved? Yeah. Amen. You say, well, preacher, it's not recorded there in John chapter 3 where Jesus led him through the sinner's prayer. How do we know that Nicodemus got saved? Because the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we're a child of God. It's evident that Nicodemus had experienced a new birth because of what he did after Christ's crucifixion. Right. This is very important. Don't miss this. Everybody with me? You're listening. I'm almost done. We're going to be done before the top of the hour. You're going to be fine. But listen, this is so important. 
Salvation is a matter of the heart. Salvation is not agreement with Bible knowledge. Salvation is not passing a quiz about the doctrine of soteriology, commonly known as salvation. Salvation is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of trusting Christ. Amen. It's believing what Jesus has said in his word, and it's trusting Christ to save your soul, trusting Christ to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Listen, I, I want to make sure I'm clear about this this morning. You must be born again. Salvation is not one, two, three, repeat after me. Right. Now, I am, I am in no way criticizing. I have led, thank the Lord, for the ones I've been, been privileged to lead through the sinner's prayer. But saying the sinner's prayer doesn't save you. Right. Trusting Christ and Christ alone is Amen. the only way to be saved. Amen. It's trusting Christ. Listen, I don't know if you've caught on to this. I've, I've become more and more aware of this as I continue to study and read my Bible. There are a few, few times where you see people where it's recorded exactly what they said when they trusted Christ, when they prayed to be saved. Why? Because it's a matter of the heart. I think if it were recorded exactly what you should say, every, we'd all be running around with little cards. Our tracks would have little cards on them. Say, the, say this sentence here. Jesus said to say it. You'll be saved. No, it's not saying words. It's trusting Christ. Can I say it a different way? If it were saying words, Nicodemus would have said them thousands of times. But Nicodemus needed to experience the new birth. You must be born again. Listen, you can. Amen. You can be born again. You can be born again today. Do you know Christ is the answer to the need of your soul been met? Salvation is a matter of the heart. It's not intellectual understanding or agreement. It's faith. For by grace are, we, are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Nicodemus had questions. Perhaps this morning you have the same questions or similar questions in your soul. Nicodemus went to the right person. He went to the Word of God incarnate. You say, well, Jesus is not, I can't go to the Word of God incarnate today, can I? No, but we have the Word of God in print. Amen. If you have an answer, you have a need in your soul, if you're responding to our invitation time this morning, a Bible counselor, someone who knows the Word of God, will take God's Word and show you what God's Word says, the Word of God in print, about the need of your soul. You can be born again today. Salvation is available to you and to me, and it's only available in the Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Does the Spirit bear witness with your spirit that you're a child of God today? If not, come. Let us help you. Our Father, we thank you for our time and your word today. What I pray for those among us who are wrestling in their soul. They need to find peace. Lord, I pray they'd come and allow us to show them in your word the answer to the need of their heart. The answer is you. I pray you give our counselors wisdom as they counsel with both. If you so provide that opportunity today. Lord, minister to needs. To those of us who know you, Lord, give us strong assurance and confidence. Lord, help us to be busying ourselves with the business of sharing the good news with others. Lord, you're the answer to the world's needs today. And we have it. Help us to proclaim you to others. Bless now this invitation time, Lord, we give it to you. Guide and direct, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll turn the video off so that we'll be